scratch, wampum, dough, sugar, clams, loot, bills, bones, bread, bucks, money. Money is, at its essence, that measure. Welcome to the Ozark Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Jamie G. Esquire V, MD, Master of Surgical Arts. I'm here with my co-host, Magna Mills, and we're going to get you ready for the final seven episodes of Ozark. Mills, tell the people your deal and what the hell we're doing on this little mini-sode. Every time you say Master of Surgical Arts, I feel like it was a Jizza album that we just never got to get. I'm sure Ruth Langmore would have enjoyed that. Thank you for checking us out on Magna Mills, always our podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Hit the like button. Helps us out a ton. You know, if you're not already subscribed to the podcast, please do so. If not, you know, if you are, excuse me, please rate, review, all that good stuff. Really appreciate it. Helps us out. And what we're going to do tonight's pretty simple. We're just going to have some fun. And we're going to pretend that Netflix is promoting Ozark by opening an Ozark-themed Riverboat Casino. So we're going to talk about all the Ozark-themed stuff that could be inside said casino. The games, the shows, the services, they got it all. It's all Ozark-themed. We're going to make it all up, and it may or may not be entertaining. So, Jamie G., sound good to you? Sounds freaking awesome, right? And our jobs here on the Ozark Podcast is to figure out what kind of Ozark gaming and entertainment options the casino will offer. And I think it's important to note, this is a riverboat casino. We're almost there and, you know, open international waters. It's quite not international, but the implication, who knows what could happen. So we'll relax the rules a little bit here as far as what types of games are allowed. You know, part of me, it's because I have a soft spot for the old Bob Barker prices, right? And they had the little joint where the man would climb up the mountain. He's going, and then he could like fall off. I wanted to do that, but I couldn't really figure out the logistics. Boy, that's tough. I mean, it's no Planko, but I kind of like that one, Magna Mills. Let's get into it here, baby. Pitch me an Ozark-themed casino game or attraction. Well, Planko, but I couldn't figure it out. So, uh, yeah, you know, we have to do something classic. So, let's just go with a, a fun Ozark game. You don't know shit about fuck. And you just have all dealers, and they're just doing straight up three card money, dude. Follow the queen. You got three cards. One of them's a queen. Follow the queen. You win. That's it. You got a 33% chance of winning. Or do you? I don't know. Because you don't know shit about fuck. Boy, oh boy, Magnum Mills. That's a great one. I feel like every casino should have that game in there. I got one for you. Well, ultimately, don't know shit about fuck could also be a comedy show starring Ruth Langmore. I would oh. go see that. Like, we just heard just shitting on just society and everybody for 30 minutes or something. I, I would go, I would sign up to see, you know, don't know shit about fuck. Featuring Ruth Langmore. Yeah, all day, every day. Magna Mills, I've got a good one for you here. It's called Darlene No More. That's right. A magic show with Darlene and her assistant, Wyatt. Now, Magna Mills, my question to you is, does Wyatt get in the box and does Darlene saw him in half? Or does Darlene go in the box? I think maybe it depends on what night you're seeing the show. All we know is she went from Langmore to no more, so they must do a disappearing act, I figure, right? And, Ooh. You know, and people like that's a, the, the main show. It's like, hey, look at these two. They're married. Guess how that happened? It's a real fun uh, interactive audience adventure for everybody, I think. Yes, it is. And that has some twists, some turns. And at some point, Magnum Mills is darn right scary. Yeah, let's go with one of my fun ones. And sometimes in casinos, you see these kind of random variations on poker games. So let's go with Bitch Wolves Wild in light of the Ruth's line to Wendy there. Like, and so I would say we do Bitch Wolves Wild, one draw poker, Queens are wild. Oh, Queens wild all day, every day, Magna Mills. What do you think the buy-in is on that? Yeah, you probably have to do like a, I guess you could start like a $5 table. It's probably you have to, um, like jacks, like pair of jacks of pet or something like that. It'd be something similar to you see in normal, like a video poker game. But I think it would just be funny if you redid the the queen cards with a little bit of a bitch wolf somehow or something to do the the theme up for it. So I think that would be cool. And then you sell the the bitch wolf cards, like as playing cards on t shirts, that kind of thing. It could be one of your symbols. The whole casino is the bitch wolf. 
Absolutely. Should be the house card, the house flag for sure. Take uh, definitely a house. I would drink some bitch wolf vodka, I feel. Oh, yeah. House vodka is bitch wolf. I'm there for it, Magna Mills. We cannot have a Ozark themed casino and 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 just live our lives without a bird as the word. Hear me out on this, Magna Mills. We've got a slot machine that's combining the birds and the song by surfing birds. It feels kind of like the family guy gang, but it could I could see it though, where it's like Marty's chasing around money or something, like chasing money through the banking system, and you got to line up all the the decrypting things to launder the money or something, and it's all set to bird is the word. That might actually work. I I would probably waste twenty dollars on that slot machine. Now that I think about it, I mean I'd waste twenty dollars on any slot machine. But that song is, I, you know, especially if like, wouldn't that be the fucked up thing? It's like you could play it for twenty dollars for maximum pull, or forty dollars with the song on mute, so you get people so annoyed by it, but they want to <laughs> play, so they start paying extra to mute the song. Oh my god, I brilliant. Has Vegas done that yet? I might have just invented something new for you, Vegas. So uh, I don't think Vegas has being deliberately annoying and making people pay to stop. Yeah. But, but Vegas, we do have some bad news for you. As Jamie G. Esquire the fifth, we do have intellectual property, and you will have to pay us for that idea, but we will gladly negotiate with you. Uh, well, we can steal other people's intellectual property. Like, let's do a Chuck E. Cheese joint, like a kitty daycare, so the parents have somewhere to drop the kids, and they can just have, like, it'll be like a bird thing instead of a Chuck E. Cheese thing. I don't know, so it's like birds or whatever, and they can, they can do the bird song there, right? It's all... Maybe they get, we'll steal Big Bird too while we're at it. I mean, if we're stealing intellectual property. Yeah. Well, shout out to Sesame Street. We'll, we'll, we'll give you some, we'll kick it back on the back end of you somehow. I mean, well, I'd rather Sesame have Big Bird than <laughs> We have than Sesame Barney. Street theme slots. A little cross promotion. I'm not sure. And I just do want to mention, I should have mentioned before, that when we were serving that bitch wolf vodka, you would serve it at the Blue Cat Lounge, which is totally like a super high-end, upscale lounge, coolest bar in the casino. We bring Rachel back to be the hostess, the bartender, everything. Super high class, super cool. The BCL, Blue Cat Lounge, they don't even open till 2 a.m. Oh, Magnum Mills, only for the elite, that is for sure. We cannot leave out our boy Sam Dermody, Magnum Mills. What if we do a little witty and handsome where it's a Dangerfield-esque comedy show with our guy, Sam Dermody. He gets no respect, right? I mean, I none at see, all. I could see Sam doing some, some Dangerfield bits. I, I could kind of buy that. Like, that's uh, appropriate for a casino cruise ship kind of deal. I'm, I think I'm there for that. I mean, it wouldn't be terrible. You know, and then, you know, what else Sam can do? Because if he's working here, he could go check out our burlesque show, The Silicone Squeeze. He may or may not find some stuff he likes over there. Uh, yeah, The Silicone Squeeze is a must on this casino boat. Absolutely must. And don't worry, Magna Mills, you're tied up. You're doing all this stuff. You've got, you know, you don't want to go to the restaurant. You don't want to go get a drink. Don't worry. We got our boy Dell with Drink and Deliver. That's right. He will bring you whatever you want, food, drink, just full-blown concierge service, courtesy of Dell. That makes perfect sense. You can have the app like Delivery use his face and being the Ozark thing, they can even bring you some uh, extracurricular adult ma party materials or something. I don't know, maybe. I mean, if it is a true Ozark themed episode, maybe when you stay there, I don't know, maybe you give him, you know, $120 and they give you back a hundred clean dollars. I don't know, maybe... Is it too real to life? Are we going too far? Is that, uh, have we taken the theme to its logical conclusion and just made another way to launder money? I think we may have Magna Mills. It shouldn't be this easy, but boy, oh boy, <laughs> I think we're onto something here with this casino. Yeah, I got a couple because I saw uh, there was a promo photo. I'm pretty sure it's for Wyatt's funeral and you see three in the dude, dude is like, five foot 50. 30 at this point dude so i'm saying like you know you're on the top deck you have one of those basketball hoops where you can bring the the rim up to various heights and so you have people wager you call it like a white men can dunk and so you have just people you know you give odds on them wagering all right i can three dunk on an 11 foot rim can he dunk on a 12 foot rim can he dunk on a 15 foot rim no he can't but you know 10 and a half maybe who knows it's pretty tall dude he grew the hell up i mean he basically is a grown man with his own kids now tough 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 with and the they're rebooting white kids. man can't jump they're remaking it or whatever so maybe we get a little cross promotion going on here 
Yeah. Can you believe it's been 30 years? Actually, no, I can't, but they just did a pretty cool oral history of it. So yeah, it's uh, pretty fantastic. Actually, both written by Ron Shelton. They also wrote uh, Bull Durham, another good uh, sports comedy. Magna Mills, you had me at oral. Boy, oh boy, this has been a ton of fun. I can't tell you enough how excited I oh, am. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got wait a minute. I got one of my You got one more? Stuff. Well, okay. we left this one out because A, okay. I love craps, and B, we love Ruth. Yes, so we let's do. just kind of change craps and like give it an Ozark theme. So we'll go with craps as now Ruth Langmore and the Seven Dwarves. Basically, like, you know, you got like Little Joe, Big Joe and shit. No, we just changed all that shit. So one through seven, they're all named for the dwarves. And that's it. Except for when you crap out, you don't crap out. The dealer just yells, Ruth got you. I like that one. And let's go a little bit. We didn't do anything with the kids, dude. Trick that's loves true. the kids. We love the kids. The circle of life. Let's do the circle of dice. And it's kind of some sort of dice rolling board game kind of thing. And the whole goal of the game is if you can avoid having them become Marty and Wendy, you win. Sounds about right, doesn't it? I'm there for it. Sounds It sounds very good. And one more, because we did make a mall rats reference somewhere at some point. I think maybe possibly it wasn't on this, but maybe at some point we definitely have on this. How about a little like game show action going on? Kind of cheesy, but win, lose, or hobby. And basically here they pull audience members up on stage and they have them run their own pretend cartel against Omar. And at the end, Javi picks a winner for the, the cartel who will rule them all, so to speak. One cartel to rule them all. This is great, Magna Mills. If Netflix needs us, I would go to this casino us, just for what it's worth. To. I would definitely, yeah, I don't, I'm not a big riverboat, whatever. Yeah, but I would, I would go to this. I feel. We're there and don't worry, Netflix. All you got to do is check us out at Ozar Podcast, and we will make sure we deliver all of this content to Netflix for a fair and reasonable price. The fans want it, Magna Mills. I don't know about you, bro, but I am really excited to do these final seven episodes. Why don't you tell everyone what we've got coming between now and those final seven that's going to drop very soon, and uh, basically how we're going to cover part two of season four here at Ozark. Yeah, this is about it. We'll probably check in one more time, look back at our predictions we made at the end of part one of season four, just say maybe do like a stand by him thing. Do we want to make any amendments, any changes going forward? After that, we're going to cover the last seven episodes. What we'll probably do is a few days after the seven episodes drop, we'll cover the first three, epi- three four episodes in a block. After that, wait about another week or so, go back to episode by episode coverage of the remaining episodes. Following that, we'll do a bunch of episodes where we break down season four, the whole series. Is anything happening next? What do we think? Maybe we'll finally review Congo. Who knows? Who knows I hope to? so, Magna Mills. I hope so. It sounds like a ton of fun to Jason me. Jason was also a necessary rough Mr. Same. Yes, he was. We've got options. Thank you guys again for checking out the Ozark podcast. Magna Mills, go ahead and tell these people, bless them with the information where they can find all of our other content, which is absolutely F-R-E-E, free. Ah, the fake doctor can spell. Very good. This has been the Ozark Podcast on your favorite platform, on social media at Ozark Podcast. We're about to cover the sixth and final season of Better Call Saul on our podcast, Saul Over Soon, on your favorite podcast platform and on social media at Saul Over Soon. We continue to cover It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, because it's fun, great, and awesome on our show podcast, The Night Pod Cometh, on your favorite platform and social media. We're from the Joe Blow Football Show, where you can find a Joe Blow Football Show and on social media at Joe Blow Show. And we do a bunch of fun fantasy football, dynasty, DFS, wagering, flip a coin for money, whatever you want. We're Seize the Gap Fantasy Football. Find us on your favorite podcast platform at Seize the Gap FF and on social media at Seize the Gap FF. Just want to thank you one more time for checking us out. Really appreciate it. The liking, the subscribing, the listening, the watching. Appreciate it all. I'm Magna Mills. He's Jamie G. This has been the Ozark Podcast presented by the Joe Blow Football Show. We will see you next time, which is going to be very, very soon for some final episodes. So thank you very much. And just remember two things. Dirty money ain't worth a goddamn thing. And the bird is, in fact, the word. See you next time. This has been the Ozark Podcast, presented by the Joe Blow Football Show. 
We are not in any way, shape, or form affiliated with Ozark, MRC, Aggregate Films, or Netflix. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Any views or opinions expressed here are personal and do not represent those of people, institutions, or organizations who may or may not be associated with the Joe Blow Football Show. If you have any questions, please contact us at ozarkpodcast at gmail.com. That's ozarkpodcast at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. Please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. Eating my sesame cake. Mm-hmm.